So uh, these are the concerns that I believe if every church in this country spent two years working on these concerns, these are God's concerns. They have nothing to do with property. They have nothing to do with membership numbers. Uh, they have nothing to do with most of the things the church talks about. They have to do with God's concerns. The first is the issue of wealth, poverty, and good news to the poor. I believe every single congregation should spend two years praying, searching, struggling, uh, doing Bible study, praying some more, arguing over that. I believe the same should happen with the issue of flag and altar. Yeah. The, uh, the presence of the American flag in so many churches I preach in is to me an obscenity. Yeah. Uh, it is like saying, look guys, this may be a Christian church, but remember it's an American Christian church. Now, I believe the problem with so many Christians in this country is that they are American Christians instead of Christian Americans. And there's a world of difference between those two. And the flag doesn't help. And wrapping the, your faith in the red, white, and blue means you really don't trust God as much as you say you do. You trust, you trust God and pass the ammunition. That's what you do. So that has to be the whole issue of the relationship between church and state needs to be worked through for two years, I believe, by every congregation. The third issue is about violence and peacemaking. Um, this country is driven by the myth of redemptive violence, as Walter Wink described it. That you can, uh, that you can uh, bomb people into democracy and uh, that you can change people's lives by killing them. It's an absurdity, really. But that is, I think, something of the real belief that drives people and helps them to wave the flag when people are going, when other people who are paid professionals go to war. Um, and I, I also look at the issue of violence in this country and the fact that more Americans have been killed by Americans in riots in this country than you lost in two world wars. Whether the, and the riots were mainly by white Americans. Very few of them were by black Americans. Very few. And then the next issue I felt was a crucial one for this country, inclusion and exclusion. The whole idea of othering whoever, whether they are women, whether they are uh, gay and lesbian people, or whether they are black people, whether they are people who speak a language you don't understand, it doesn't matter who they are. The whole idea is that they, that, that they are different from me, they speak a different language, therefore they think differently from me, therefore I must fear them and somebody's going to get me to hate them sooner or later. The whole idea of inclusion and exclusion has got to be dealt with finally and definitely by the church. And uh, if we could only unlearn the lessons we were taught at Sunday school. You know, the book of Acts is all about spreading the gospel. The book of Acts is about breaking down walls, which is really what spreading the gospel is about. Uh, and learning the uneasy lessons that God is not going to be happy or satisfied with us until we have broken down every wall that divides every human being. My dad once said, as apartheid began to, to gel, he said, the, the view of this government is that while one black person and while one white person are friends, this government's policy will have failed. The view of the church is that while one white person and one black person are not friends, we, the church, have failed. Therefore, we are in an implacable confrontation with the state. That's the view of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And then the fifth issue I said was to seek the forgiveness and the restoration of creation. And I admit to be one of those who slowly came to that, that realization much too late as so many have come to some of these realizations much too late. Uh, and that is the issue of, of our planet and the fact that there, there is no planet B at all and that we are killing this planet. 